Um, I rise tonight to speak to Senator Lambie's bill and to foreshadow an amendment that the Australian Greens will be moving jointly with Senator Xenophon when we get to the committee stage. I've often, uh, reasonably frequently, found myself on the opposite side of the argument to Senator Lambie, but not on this issue. Since the first moment that she took her seat in here, the Australian Greens, more often than not, have found ourselves on the same side of the debate. The Greens believe uh, that we owe our service personnel a number of things. Firstly, to not needlessly deploy them into harm's way. And I would strongly assert that that has been done and that we have put people needlessly in harm's way numerous times through taking on wars of choice. And the second thing that we owe them is to look after them on their return. So I congratulate Senator Lambie for her advocacy and for bringing this important debate to the parliament this morning. I want to confine my remarks to the amendment that I will move jointly with Senator Xenophon when we come to the committee stage, and that is about a cohort of Australian military veterans who have remained largely forgotten. And I speak, of course, as I have done many, of time, uh, many times in the past, of our atomic veterans, those who served in Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, after the bombings of 1945, who were posted there during the occupation of Japan in the immediate post-war period, who I believe uh, would be caught by Senator Lambie's amendment. And I, uh, so I don't propose to speak uh, solely of them this morning. But the particular cohort were those veterans who were forced, as a condition of their service, to participate and witness the bombings of uh, Maralinga, Emu Plains and Maralinga by our ally, the British government, of nuclear weapons and who were exposed to neutron radiation, to fallout and have suffered a lifetime of health conditions. And the tragedy, the utter tragedy, and I've pursued this under several different prime ministers, under governments Labor and Liberal, is that because they were bombed by an ally, not an enemy, they are not eligible for gold card health support. That is an extraordinary tragedy. Exposed to radiation from nuclear weapons blasts, something that nobody should have to see. It has only happened in wartime those two times, those infamous days, August 6, August 9, 1945. But those Australian and British veterans who were exposed to nuclear blasts are not eligible for the kind of gold card support that we have been debating in, this, in the Senate this morning because their exposure was at the hands of an ally. Had they been bombed by Imperial Japan, had they been bombed by Nazi Germany, they would, as of right, be entitled to this support. They were bombed by the British government at the express invitation of the Australian government, and then we have left them hung out to dry. So the amendment is a simple one. It is uh, similar in, in, or identical in intent to an initiative that the Australian Greens launched uh, during the 2013 election campaign that does nothing more than to have these surviving veterans and their families who have been cursed with the long-term intergenerational health effects and genetic effects of exposure to ionising radiation, to have to try and prove to DVA, try and prove to health authorities, try and prove to their GPs that the extraordinary range of health conditions that they have suffered in the intervening decades was at the hands of those atomic blasts that they were forced to witness. And of course, it's like smoking a cigarette and then developing lung cancer. You can never pinpoint the exact cigarette that caused the cancer mm -hmm. to take hold in your body. Just like you can't prove that it was exposure to the atomic blasts that caused the, the hideous range of health conditions that these veterans have been exposed to. And nor should they have to, because the epidemiological evidence is sound. It is better down against decades of experience in the medical community. These veterans owe more than we are giving them. And that is why I'm proud to stand here today. Uh, Senator Lambie knows that this is not a hostile amendment, uh, that this is an amendment that effectively complements and closes an intergenerational loophole that we opened up when we allowed Australian personnel to be harmed by the actions of an ally. And that is not something that anybody should be subject to. Mr Ray Whitby, fellow, a fellow Western Australian, he was a nuclear veteran in the 1958 atomic weapons testing at the Monte Bellows in Western Australia. And he says the following. More than half a century ago, I was a young man eager to serve this country. And as a result, I have suffered a lifetime of medical issues that have impacted my enjoyment of life, 
All I ask is fair and just compensation. Mr Geoffrey Gates, one of the 290 veterans who took their case to the Australian Human Rights Commission, and he says, to not be recognised by the government as having participated in non-warlike hazardous activities is an insult. To me, to my family and to all other veterans and civilians whose lives changed forever because we simply weren't told the truth. We owe these individuals better. The tragedy is we took for the 2013 election a costing from the, from the Independent Parliamentary Budget Office. And what they told us was extraordinary. It was that the later you leave the introduction of this essential measure to support the health of this dwindling cohort of individuals, the later you leave the introduction, the cheaper it gets. And I would ask the Senate to pause and reflect on why that is. It is because these people are dying. They were exposed in the 1940s and 1950s, and there aren't many of them left. And the absolute least obligation that I would say that we owe them whatever your political alignment, whatever your allegiance is in this place or what it was that, you, that brought you here, is that we should offer them this assistance while some of them yet live. Is that too much to ask? In the context of the Defence White Paper announced this morning, which proposes in aggregate a trillion dollars in military spending over forthcoming decades, the least we can do is to honour and acknowledge and help support those veterans who suffered not at the hands of the enemy but at the hands of a nuclear-armed ally. I thank Senator Lambie and I thank the Senate.